Hello everybody, Mobius1 here, bringing you another episode of Star Wars Galaxies Emulator. Uh, this episode, I actually want to talk about some camera tricks that not, not every player may know. Even some veterans may not know some of these tricks. Uh, and these tricks are really going to be used... Well, not only will they be used to change the way the game looks for you while you play, but they can also be used to take some pretty interesting screenshots. Um, so, if you open up your options menu, the very first thing you want to check under the graphics tab, at the very bottom, it says here, save screenshots as. You can actually choose what file format you save your screenshot as. I believe the def it defaults to JPEGs. Um, I would leave it at that just because it's a pretty standard image format, but the thing you want to make sure is that if you do do JPEGs, um, that this slider is left at max. Uh, this is the quality of the screenshot, and by lowering the slider, you, you actually won't notice any difference in game, but when you take the screenshot and you go to check it, um, the quality will be severely lessened. It'll be very grainy, very pixelated. So in order to get the screenshot to look what your, like what your game screen actually looks like, you're going to want to keep this slider at max. Um, now other than that, there are a few things that you can mess with. Uh, particularly under the graphics options. Viewing distance, you really always want to have this maxed out. That is ha just how far you can see into the world before it starts to get foggy. Uh, so as you see by lowering viewing distance, I can't even see that island in the middle of the water anymore. But by bumping this up, uh, we can see well beyond that. Field of view is a big one. Uh, field of view in galaxies actually starts all the way to the left. So many of you uh, probably, your, your game probably looks like this. And that's okay if you, you know, you're comfortable with this. To me, this feels very much like I'm zoomed in on my character from a very far distance. Like, it, it just feels weird. Uh, on the other hand, if you were to max out field of view, it's like you're playing the game through a fisheye lens. Uh, this is this is the complete opposite. Everything feels very stretched out to me. So I find by setting field of view to 90 degrees, which is right about in the middle. Let's see, 89, 90. Uh, I think this is a good balance of getting a wide field of view as well as maintaining you know proper dimensions of of people, right? Like my guy, look, he doesn't look stretched out. It's about normal. He could lose a few pounds, but hey, can't we all? Uh, after that, show detailed world objects. I'm not sure that this is even working in the emulator, to be honest with you, because I don't ever see anything change when I do this. Um, but you want to also make sure that you use low detail for distant characters, that this is off. Uh, let me see if I can demonstrate that. Basically what that does is if there is a NPC or a player uh, that's kind of, you can see them, but they're pretty far away. The game will actually use a lower level model for that NPC. All right, let's see, see this Rodian right here. If I turn this on, does that change him? No, it's kind of hard to tell. Well, yeah, you could see, if you're watching in HD, you could probably see his model is actually changing. His armor is disappearing when I turn this on. Uh, and it looks like he gets a hole in his head. So. I would leave this off. Uh, character level of detail manager, leave that off. Uh, your uh, All your sliders here, you want these maxed out. Of course, nebula density in space doesn't mean anything yet because there is no space. And shadows, this is a personal preference. Uh, I personally don't like the shadows in galaxies because it just, things just look weird. Uh, but if, if you want to turn shadows on, again, I mean, I guess that looks kind of cool, the volumetric shadows on the ground, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't particularly care for the shadows. Another big thing for taking screenshots that most people may not know is uh, object names. Now under miscellaneous in the options menu, you actually have check boxes at the bottom here that allow you to show, uh, to check which object names will, will appear over a, uh, over something in the game. 
by default. So I actually like to have everything on except for NPCs names because sometimes that can make things a bit crowded, uh, particularly in like Mos Eisley Cantina which is loaded with NPCs. But you can see as I turn this on, uh, this actually set tells me that he's a Spinet operative even when I don't mouse over him. Uh, but by turning it off it just makes him stand there. Uh, it is important to know that the N key by default will actually toggle this off and on. Uh, so you can actually switch between it just by pressing N. Chat bubbles are another thing. Uh, some people like the chat bubbles because it's, you know, it makes it easier to tell who's talking, but for someone who's trying to, you know, make a theatrical video or take some, you know, pretty screenshots and you're in a town and you don't want people with chat bubbles running by. Uh, if I, let's see, if I just type hello into chat, you can see I get the little chat bubble here. There's under chat in the options, chat bubbles enabled. I can turn that off and now when I type hello, my character will still wave, hello still appears in chat, but nothing above my head. So that makes screenshot taking a lot, you know, prettier. On the note of chat, you may have noticed in some of my videos that I tend to hide my chat box. Uh, you can do that by holding control and pressing enter. That will shrink your chat box down, but keep uh, the rest of your UI on screen. Uh, this is good if you want to, I don't know, hide chat or if you just want to have some more screen space, but you don't want to hide your entire heads up display. If you do want to hide your whole heads up display, the shortcut for that is control H. You see the entire HUD disappears here. You have a completely picture perfect screen. Uh, and then Control H again will bring it back. And on the topic of shortcuts, uh, not that this will really help you with any camera tricks, or I'm sorry, not that this will help you with any screenshots, but it is a camera trick. By holding Control Shift and pressing the S key, you can actually make your camera automatically spin around your character. Uh, now this will only last until you manually move the camera. So as you can see, I can still move my uh, cursor around when I'm in cursor mode. I can still click on things. I can still open, you know, inventory windows or check mail or, you know, whatever, go into options and the camera will continue to spin. But as soon as I switch mouse modes back, to my camera mode and turn my my cursor, it stops. Uh, now I can you know start it right up again, but that's uh, that's how long that goes. That will last indefinitely until you manually move the camera. You can even uh, move your character while the camera rotates, as long as again you don't manipulate the camera angle. It does make running in straight lines very difficult, though. Once you have all your settings set the way you want and you're ready to take your screenshot, all you need to do, line yourself up, I'm gonna hide my HUD, control H, and press the print screen key, usually at the top of your keyboard. Um, by doing that, that actually places a JPEG, well in my case a JPEG screenshot of my current screen just in your base Star Wars Galaxies folder. So it's going to be in your, uh, by default again, C drive, program files, uh, Star Wars Galaxies, not your SWG EMU folder, just your base Star Wars Galaxies folder. Wherever you have Galaxies installed is where the screenshot's going to be. All right, so uh, I hope this little video tutorial on screenshots was helpful. This information may be used in an upcoming contest very shortly, so stay tuned for that. There will be this one here, and I will see you guys next time.